spacing is a dry word, but it makes a huge difference to how your plants grow and the harvest you may expect and the level of disease even and, and um, space they have to grow. So it's about giving plants room to express themselves without wasting space. So it's finding that balance point between successful growth and not having much. <laughs> and over, over decades, I've tried so many spacings and I want to show you the results now. I thought, ah, oh, I had the idea just um, a couple of days ago. I thought this would be a great time to make this video because they're all here and I can show you the results of the spacings I recommend. And actually I was just going through with my tape measures, just checking some of these measurements. Uh, because I do it, I do it personally very much by eye and you can do that as well. You know, you don't have to literally measure your spacings. What I'm giving you is ballpark figures. And I realized when measuring that I haven't followed my own spacing sometimes. They're, they're actually a little bit wider, a little bit closer than I had thought. Uh, but that's why I was checking because I want, want to be able to share with you a, a precise figure. But don't worry about actually following that to the letter here. And here you can get the idea of what happens if you go a bit one way or a bit the other. So if we look at these Brussels sprouts, I've divided plants for this video into roughly five categories. And these are in the top group, so to speak, of the most space needed. And you can see why, because look how, even after we've taken off a lot of lower leaves, the, the canopy is using all of this space, including coming out over the edge to the pathway. Pathway is also part of your space. Don't neglect your paths when you're doing your spacing calculations. So what happens is roughly, these are 60 centimeters, actually going up to 70, two to two and a half feet apart each, each plant. So when they go in small, these actually went in between carrots, so that helps them because they're quite a long way from each other. They find that a little bit traumatic. So if you can interplant them between something, that's good. But then as they grow, they're using all that space, but the space to the edge of the bed, if I draw a line there roughly, when, when you don't have size to your bed, you know, where is the edge? And I've got a rough idea, it's about there. <laughs> and this is a 1.25 meter, just over four foot bed. So that means we got about 35, 40 centimeters between the edge and the first line, if you like. I tend to do it in lines, even though they're equidistant. I don't want to get too technical here and sort of put you off with calculations, but the, the, the virtue of having lines rather than just dotting them in in random is, so two lines are long in this case, it's, it's easier to, to work out your spacings. So before I plant anything, I'll, quite often I'll go along with my dibber actually, and, and the dibber has spacings on it and, and just li line it up, uh, line up the lines. <laughs> that gives me a, a visual clue where to put the plants and then do a spacing along each of those lines. So two lines for a Brussels in a 1.2 meter bed or 1.25 meter, and each one is around 60 to 65 centimeters, just over two foot apart, that, that's it. And then as I could do a little harvest here to give you an idea, you can see, you know, these, these plants, which look so far apart at the beginning, and that's given them space to produce a lot of food. And each of these Brussels, I like Brussels because they're, they're so dense. There are so many in one little Brussel. You know, it's like a little cabbage heart. Um, I'll stop about here. There's no rush. These will go on till Christmas, all being well. They're, they're going to carry on growing near the top. Uh, they've got a bit of white fly. That's common at this time of year. But again, giving spacing reduces the white fly. So if you put, if I put these closer, there'd be more white fly. So again, that's finding that balance point. And a similar spacing to these is purple sprouting broccoli, uh, giant cauliflowers if you want really big ones. So there you've got the, the choice as well. Uh, with Brussels, you don't really have that choice in a way because they're, they just need to grow big to do this. Uh, but with certain plants, you can vary it and just get a slightly different size harvest. Uh, also on a very wide spacing, we have perennial plants like rhubarb and asparagus. Asparagus is pretty similar spacing to this, actually 65 centimeters, say. Rhubarb closer to a meter. And then you've got all the cucurbits. They really like up to a meter. So that's squash and pumpkins and courgettes. And you've got in the polytunnel, say under cover, where you've got summer crops that need a lot of space to express themselves and crop grow for a long time. I would put tomatoes, cucumbers also, uh, well, tomatoes maybe 60 centimeters, cucumbers a meter. What is that? 
it's like a. I think it must be one of those sand barrier planes. Sort of typhoons. Really? So we're going to have a look next at some slightly closer spaced vegetables and they're the second out of the five categories so we've got wide slightly closer say medium then you've got average i would call it which is about a foot 30 centimeters then we've got a bit closer than that say but not close close and then you've got a mixed so this that's more complicated if you've got different types of vegetable growing close together and they all need different spacing. That can be a bit tricky to work out, but I can give you one or two examples. So let's have a look at some celeriac. <laughs> These celeriac are an example of something you can space a little wider or a little closer according to what you want. And I've got two examples in my garden this year where we space these a little bit wider, 40 centimeters. And that's, uh, that's, one foot four inches you can see that's quite a bit especially when they're small when they're going small and you think oh that's a lot of room these actually went in between spring onions i'm trying to think was that right yeah this had we we interplanted spring onions between them um with wider space vegetables this interplanting is really worth looking at because you've got empty ground at the beginning and it's a kind of companion planting for your new plant it puts them close to some friends <laughs> and so then um, I came along about two months later, it must have been, uh, from planting the six weeks actually, from planting the spring onions, transplanting multi sown spring onions and harvested them. I had a nice harvest right through like um, June mainly uh, because these went in the ground early May. So this spacing has given big celeriac, which weigh at least a kilo and a half, like three and a half pounds. They're, they're monsters and they're, they're really good, as you can see, nice healthy leaves ready to harvest at any time. Whereas down there, we've got closer spaced uh, 30, 35 centimeters. So just over a foot and they're still very nice, but they're smaller. So if, if you wanted to cram a few more plants in and have say medium sized um, celeriac, you could do that. You've got choices and interesting, isn't it? How they push up above the ground, which does make them easier to harvest. Actually, I don't want to cut too tight here. If I want to keep these for a while, it will be better that I don't cut too much root off. So if you were doing that, don't trim them too tight at this point. You know, I could have even left a bit more actually. If it was for long-term winter storage, I would have done that. Um, I'm just going to do a rough cut across the top actually, if the leaves at this point, we'd normally take a bit more trouble to get the, um, Actually, that's interesting. It's multi-headed as well. I'm not too clear what that means, and I would normally I wouldn't want to be cutting into the root like that. So, <laughs> slightly botched harvest for you, but that just to give an idea, the wonderful amount of food from a plant which, when it went in in by the middle of May, was quite small, and you think, is that really going to do much? Uh, give it enough space. It's one of the few vegetables that actually needs a whole season to grow. Uh, I'll actually take a few of these leaves as well because these are great for making stock. So we've got double harvest there. And on the same spacing as this, we would you could have uh, multi-sown leeks and that would give you medium-sized leeks, quite large even, because we're going to look in a minute at leeks spaced more closely. Uh, you could also grow uh, cabbage. They wouldn't be enormous. So the cabbage between this spacing and the Brussels sprouts we saw is that kind of option for small to large cabbages, cabbage heads. Cauliflower, similar story, actually I'll go a bit wider than these. We've got some Romanesco at the moment, which are 50 centimeters, for example. Uh, so many options of this kind of spacing, which although I call it medium, actually is quite wide, really. Uh, we're gonna look next at perhaps what I should call a medium spacing, which is some multi sown leeks that are not enormous. We're now looking at a wide range of vegetables which are in the middle zone of spacing and these multi sown leeks are a good example of that. They're in their lines they're roughly 25, the space between the lines is about 40. <laughs> That's another variation on using lines as opposed to literally equal distance and that means 
they're about 32 centimeters apart 13 inches and that means we're getting leeks that are medium size we could have given them a bit more space you can do that with leeks then you'll get bigger leeks but uh, another factor was that these are second planting so this can affect your spacing consideration second planting meaning they followed potatoes so we couldn't get them in the ground so early in the year as i might have liked because you can plant leeks you can actually plant them out in may even late may say early june and then you've got a chance to get really big ones maybe give them a bit more space these ones on uh, 13th of july planting uh they've done all right you know we sow them april so they were quite big plants when they went in the ground and there's a bit of leaf miner here actually but it's not too bad so what, what we're getting from this bed is we, we were harvesting some this morning so i know roughly how much leek i'm going to get here and that's roughly a quarter of a kilo might be a little bit more actually for this clump is a good one and there's eight plants along a bed of two and a half meters so that's about eight times a quarter <laughs> two kilos and there's three rows so that's about six kilos actually that sounds a bit light to me we i normally reckon to get eight kilos and i think we will in the end because there's a different variety on that far row which is slightly bigger plants so eight kilos of leeks from each of these beds which is 1.2 meter wide two and a half meter long that's about four by six and a actually no 2.2 meter and um, they're four by six and a half feet these beds <laughs> so eight kilos of leeks space like this and potatoes we've already had 14 kilos so they're an example of a spacing that needs to be wider if you want a decent haul of potatoes we give them 60 centimeter two feet between each potato a seed potato which looks quite a long way when you put them in but they boy do they grow fast and fill up their space uh, another one is beetroot that and chard both of those very closely related they will express themselves if you give them more space for sure uh, you can get monster beetroot obviously i find on average 35 centimeters uh, 14 inches is a good spacing between multi sown beetroot for a decent size but you can go closer if you want smaller beetroots and chard very similar if you want small chard leaves for salad more you could go as little as 25 centimeters which is around 10 inches or you could go wider i've got some over there which are 40 centimeter between the ch each chard plant there's two in each clump but they've been cropping since late June and that we're now in November. So that's longevity of, of cropping as well is another factor. There's so many factors come into spacing and um, Edward who's filming did just point out that I'm probably making it sound really complicated because I'm throwing these numbers at you. And they're not really in, in any kind of defined or sequential order. And I accept that, you know, that's what I'm trying to give you is ideas. What we will put on in the video description some lists that you can work from a bit and do have a look as well at you know my online course um knowledge packs we got one where there's a lot of, about spacings for example it's definitely a subject worth jenning up on and uh, there's two parts i haven't mentioned we're going to look at the last one in a minute but i'll just mention closer spacing at this point which is we're not quite there with these spinach but you can see there they're getting there uh, and if you wanted again rather like the chard you could go closer than this on spinach these are 25 uh, centimeters 22 even so that's 9 10 inches and that's going to give you quite a few medium-sized leaves you could go a bit wider these by the way should survive the winter that's what i'm hoping and if you want to grow things like multi-sown radish that's probably the closest of all in corn salad lamb lettuce you can go as little as 15 centimeter six inches there aren't many plants i'd go closer than that to get a, a decent um, viable harvest with healthy plants. So let's just have a look to finish up a bit of mixed planting actually on my trial beds. So here we have some nice mixed planting in this one bed, which is five meters, 16 feet long. This year, we've already grown potatoes, leeks, onions, carrots, beetroot, uh, peas spinach and that was the first crop so now we're into the second crop so I'm not doing any serious rotation here so I'm looking for spaces where I see a space that is enough space for a certain plant I'll pop it in <laughs> so this is kind of a different way of planning if you like in a way doing it more by spacing and these kale for example went in between onions and there was enough room for four kale plants and then I lost one 
some kind of bacterial rot. We've had a lot of that this year. Unusual, well, unusually a large amount. Anyway, so I've now got three kale plants. Uh, they've still been cropping very well. And they're spaced at, uh, going across the bed, only 33 centimeters. That's about 13 inches, which is quite close for kale. But of course they've got quite a bit of space on either side. Uh, because they're tall partly and they, they can sort of overshadow the beetroot so you know these are all considerations the space between the kale and the beetroot rows is actually 50 centimeters which is um, 20 inches uh, but then the beetroot clumps and look how big they've got with this you know not a huge amount of space they're they're about um, 12 inches 30 centimeters apart uh, they're ready to harvest <laughs> the winter beetroot so these are good by the way they're not woody or anything they're just big and loads of food there and then going on the other side you can see there's celery and that's a plant that benefits from quite close spacing partly you get more self blanching uh, so celery normally i'd give 30 centimeter 12 inches but these have got that between them actually they're a bit less uh they're let me see there were six seven plants going across so that's closer to um 25 centimeter 10 inches but they've got quite a bit of space either side but then the further consideration which you know is worth looking at when you've got a big plant like this how far are its roots actually traveling and with a tall plant like kale it's actually will be going easily as far as those celery which means if it didn't rain much i would need to be watering that celery a lot because the kale will be taking quite a bit of the moisture so that's where that's where you could say you know they're not ideal companions but because we've had a, a wet summer and autumn it's worked fine <laughs> So that, you know, that, how there's, there's often no hard and fast rules in this, but what I'm always looking to do is give you these indications. And I could just finish on these rocket actually, because here we've got a close spacing of salad plants. And you can see we're getting plenty of rocket from a very late planting. These went in, in September, went in the ground in September, right at the back end. And we've had one harvest and we're, we're harvesting by taking the outer leaves like this and you know we could come back for more at this rate even though this is the 7th of november today it's crazy and it's a a, a, a cool tolerating low light level <laughs> tolerant plant rocket you can see with the no dig got some nice mushrooms here as well um, but the spacing of them across the row is is as close as six inches or 15 centimeters uh, but there's having said that there's quite a bit of space either side so I hope I shed a little light on this subject, which is actually fascinating, spacing. You know, you, you can play around with this a lot. And especially when you're mixing up crops like this and working out when they mature. I like I was saying kale between onions, so I put them in four weeks before the onion finished because I knew if it had been eight weeks, that wouldn't have worked because the kale would have needed to grow seriously before the onion had finished. So I would say if you're doing an interplanting, give them roughly four weeks before something finishes that you could start like the Brussels sprouts between the carrots that we saw as well. Have fun with that.